My name is Sergei Platonov. Thank you for attending my session. Today I want to talk about a performance improvement for large NVMe-based system, about existing software for NVMe storage and our R&D achievements. I will demonstrate you our performance testing results and some ideas toward our solution. So I'm switching off my video and let's go. Here is the brief presentation plan. I will start with our motivation. Then I will describe the test and, and testing methodology. The point number three contains test results we get conducting a performance tuning of the system. Then I will show you performance results of legacy software rate. And after that, I will share some thoughts about our solution and give you performance benchmarking results. We want to ask you to rate this session. Your feedback helps us to become better. Nowadays, the server market is changing rapidly. Almost all vendors provide servers with SNVMe slots. We see the chassis with multiple drives. PCIe for bus and new network technologies double throughput and we can get dozens of millions of IOPS and tens of gigabytes per second from a single server. But do we have an effective software solution for building fast and fault-tolerant storage system? Storage software is responsible for device controlling, providing data availability and data services like thin provisioning and volume snapshots. Software can compress and duplicate data blocks and for sure provides application access to the data chunks. Today we have new approaches like SPDK from Intel and key value interfaces from other vendors, but most of applications still need a standard approach. Today we are going to focus on the drivers and the rate as a way to provide data availability. The first part of test is dedicated to drivers, schedulers, and I.O. interfaces. We have a single server with a dual socket motherboard from Supermicro and 20 NVMe drives from Western Digital. 72 calculation threads we have in total. We flash the latest version of firmware to get the best and most stable performance results. We should use modern Linux kernels to get advantages of new drivers, modes, and I.O. libraries. It's very important to achieve stable results when you are testing NAND-based NVMe devices. I always run preconditional workloads and reach steady states before collecting the data. You can download few configuration files using core code. However, I will give you main ideas here. You test block devices with direct equals one parameter set. Block size is four kilobytes. Quid depths and number of threads are variable. Mix workload means 70% of reads and 30% of writes. Let's start from single drive performance testing results.
Here you can see the number of IOPS depending on the number of threads and QE depths. A single drive demonstrates up to 520,000 IOPS. The drives we have provide excellent performance with the mixed I.O. pattern. Here we have up to 150,000 IOPS. And now we test 20 drives. An average performance is about 70 to 80 percent of the hardware maximum. And the massive degradation we can see on the test with 72 jobs. The key reason is software settings. The best result is 8.2 million IOPS. This is the mixed pattern, and we are close to 4.7 million IOPS. Our goal is to achieve 10 million IOPS from the rate volume. To get this record, we need to have at least 10.5 million from the raw drives. Let's tune the system step by step. First of all, we disable power saving, disable EO stats, and run tuned ADM profile from good performance command. I really like tuned ADM utility, it makes a big job for you. Then we try polling for NVMe drivers and alternative I.O. libraries. Sometimes write NUMA settings help a lot, but in my case, all the drives are connected to the same NUMA node. After the base system tuning, we get 1.2 million IOPS small, and now the record is 9.3 million but we still have troubles with 72 IO threads. Polling was implemented in SPDK. Drivers for NVMe demonstrated promising results. Now we can set up polling for regular drivers. There are two types of polling, classic and hybrid. To set up hybrid polling, send zero to IO poll delay file for each drive. The main disadvantage of polling is higher CPU load. classic polling results. Half million IOPS more and we have improved performance number under heavy load. Now we have 9.8 million IOPS. Hybrid polling mode is a miracle. We have got 10.6 million IOPS and a beautiful chart. The IO link is a new Linux IO interface. It provides a low latency and future rich interface for applications that require asynchronous IO.
Our new record is 10.9 million IOPS. We have a large zone with more than 10 million IOPS results. Of course, we didn't forget about the mixed workload. Now we're close to 5 million IOPS and our performance tuning steps give us up to 27% performance improvements. Okay, now we have more than 10 million IOPS and it's time to run test on the right. When you have large number of drives, RAID 10 usage is too expensive and we recommend you to use RAID 5 or RAID 6 instead. We build standard software RAID and perform some tuning. For example, increase the number of calculation threads. We don't turn on write lock. I demonstrate to you the best results we achieved with 72 fewer jobs because the free data chart is too complicated. So we have the following results. We see less than 20% of the maximum possible reading performance and just 10% for the mixed pattern. Integrated mode, we lose a lot. After this search we have conducted, we saw that Linux software rate should be completely rewritten to improve the productivity. Then we decided to develop new rate from, from the ground. After the search we have conducted, we saw that Linux software rate should be completely rewritten to improve the productivity. Then we decided to develop new rate from, from the ground. So, we designed a new software solution. One of the main requirements was flexibility. It should work with any NVMe devices, local and network from any vendor. So you can create a distributed rate or cluster from software rates. Also, it should support POSIX API and provide a block device. The performance goals are simple. 50 gigabyte per second for sequential workload and 10 million IOPS for random workload on RAID 6. Also, it should have a free version. The performance goals are simple. 50 gigabyte per second for sequential workload and 10 million IOPS for random workload on RAID 6. A few words about the product architecture. Our driver is very simple. We have only one kernel model. It works with block devices, local or remote and VME devices from any transport. PCI Express U2 M2 drive from NVMe or fabric target by fiber channel or thin band, does not matter. And it provides a local block device to user. Our product based on several performance principles. The first, we have our own patented rate calculation engine because we have to calculate checksums for rate with parity. The second, of course, lockless data pass. No spin logs, no scheduling, no memory copy. About calculation engine. Everyone knows that rate with checksums have a fault tolerance. Checksums are used for recovering the data. There are several standard algorithms for calculating the checksums, but they are complicated and slow. They use complicated and slow vector operation. 
For high performance rate, we designed a new calculation engine, which is fast and simple. It uses only one simple vector operation and has less data move operations. The main performance challenge was in data pass with IO handling. Threads working with same stripe can write data and update checksum in parallel. So we can use locking mechanism for the stripe, but lost the performance. But without locking mechanism, we lost data integrity. So the solution was to use a dynamic mapping algorithm for stripes and threads to avoid logs and save data integrity. So the solution was to use a dynamic mapping algorithm for stripes and threads to avoid logs and save data integrity. Okay, and now about performance tests. We were able to break 10 million IOPS barrier. Now the maximum performance was achieved with just 200 microsecond latency. We have surpassed 3.5 million IOPS for RAID 5 in the mixed workload test. RAID 6 gives 2.5 million IOPS in the mixed IO pattern. You can see some degradation with a growing QE depth because of higher CPU load. We always test rate in degraded mode. Here you can see we achieved almost 8 million IOPS in degraded mode for rate 50. If you want to get 10 million IOPS in degraded mode, you need at least 24 drives. For the mixed pattern integrated mode for rate 50, we get more than 2 million IOPS. So, to break the 10 million IOPS barrier, we have performed step by step system tuning. We used NVMe drivers in hybrid polling mode we used new Linux I.O. interfaces and we had to rewrite RAID for Linux. Here is our plan. We know journaling limits write performance. We want to use high performance and low latency persistent memory to store write journals. So that's all. Thank you for joining us. I have a nice day. Goodbye.